Hi there, welcome everyone. My name is Khushboo. We all know that exam season is soon upon us. So I thought it would be great for us to get ourselves prepared. So I'm going to be giving out some tips to help you ace your upcoming examinations. So it's never enough to learn whatever that is being taught in the syllabus. You also have to be in the right state of mind while preparing for your examinations. So sit back and relax while I try to make your life a lot easier during the exam season. All right, so are you all ready to do it? All right then, let's get with it. So there are a couple of steps that you can take while preparing for your examinations. So let's go through them one by one. So the first step is to create a tactical plan of action. So by creating a plan, you will be able to make a schedule of the topics that you will attend to as well as carving out time for revision. So creating a plan will help avoid cramming in all the concepts at the last minute. Now, one of the most essential thing when it comes to preparing for examinations is sticking to the syllabus booklet. So all you ever need to study for the exams is present in your textbooks. I don't think you need to follow any other books than these books. Now make a note of the exam papers from the previous years and try to attempt the sample papers as well. Many of the times uh, the questions that appear in these papers are the ones that you face in the real examinations as well. So attempting these questions you get used to the type of questions and you don't have to think twice during the exams. And this uh, goes without saying, but always remember to revise the important formulas and notes. They are actually a lifesaver. And when you may, when you, uh, and it becomes really easy for you at the last minute when you have to revise the formulas and notes. Believe me, guys, these notes are really fruitful. Now, once you have all done all these, nothing is left from your side then to ace the exam. Well, guys, you must have heard it many times. Slow and steady wins the race. So the steadiness required to win any race can't be achieved until and unless you have a proper strategy and determination so that you prepare the best way you can. So today I'm going to uh, help you uh, by giving you some strategies to that you can follow before your examinations. Now imagine that you are about to take up your exam and you have prepared well for it and the questions seem to be easy too. But somehow you still end up finding too little time in, to solve all the questions. And believe it or not, this happens with almost everyone. But why does this happen? Well, the reason for this question is the method with which we solve a problem. So finding the quickest and the suitable way will help us save time and at the same time we can spend more time on the other difficult questions. Now the very first thing to do right after you get the questions is to give all of them a quick read. Yes, by doing this you can get a sound idea of the different topics being asked and also how to allocate the time accordingly. And so once you go through them, before you start solving them, do not forget to mark the ones that seem easy to solve. So solving the easy ones first will save enough time for you to spend on the tougher questions. Now, once you, while you are going through them, before you start to solve them, just be careful and read each question carefully and by paying attention to the keywords in them. So in most of the questions, these keywords will help you choose the best way to solve them. And finally, when you are faced with a long or a complex question, just don't worry. Just break that question into parts and calmly solve them one by one. Believe me, guys, you will find it much easier then. Now, let's take a close look at the first page of the question booklet. The first thing you will immediately notice here are the instructions. Like I mentioned before, always try to read them thoroughly so that you have a, uh, you have a better idea of how to go ahead with the paper. Now, it even tells you the total um, time for the examination and the maximum marks. Now, this is a sample of the board paper from the 2020. Now, due to COVID restrictions, there has been a reduction in the topics that were taught in the year. And there were four sections and each of these sections had different number of questions and were awarded different number of marks. Now, here is a set of instructions with respect to the number of marks and the marking system. So this is a sample of the paper from the year uh, 2021. Now, as I said, due to COVID restrictions, there has been a reduction in the topics that were taught in the year. Now, there are two parts in this paper, part A and part B, and both parts comprise of sections and each section comprises of different number of questions and are awarded different amount of marks. 
Now, uh, we will talk about this in detail in a few moments and you can go through the complete paper. It is available on the Paiju's website. Now, let's take a look at the typology of the questions that you will face in the question paper. So majority of marks will be based on remembering and understanding type questions. In fact, 60 marks are from these type of questions. So remembering type of questions include memory based, facts, terms, recall, basic concepts and answers. And on the another hand, um, uh, the type of questions that come under the understanding type include skills in demonstrating in understanding and comparing the ideas, translating the ideas and interpreting the real ideas as well. Now, uh, 12 marks are allotted to the applying type questions, which includes solving facts, using techniques and reuses and rules differently. Now, uh, finally, eight marks come under the questions that you require to analyze, evaluate and create. So questions related to analyzing include examining and breaking the information in parts, identifying motives or causes and questions associated to evaluation that includes presentation presenting and defending opinions by making judgments about the information and validity of ideas and when it comes to creating the uh, uh, creating the uh, information so this includes compiling information together differently by combining elements together in a new pattern uh, and alternative solutions. Now let's take a look at the marks distribution in the exam paper. Remember how I told you that there would be four sections and each section comprises of different number of questions and they will be awarded different amount of marks. Now here you can see that section A consists of 20 questions which is from question number 1 to 20 and each one of them carries one mark. And question uh, section B had six marks, um, had six questions of two marks each and section C had eight questions of three marks each and section D had six questions with four marks each. Now let's take a look at the marks distribution in the exam paper for the year. My exam paper you will have for 2021. Now as I said due to COVID restrictions the, the, the number of topics have been reduced. Now here you can see that there are two parts in this paper, part A and part B. In part A, we have two sections, section 1 and section 2. So in section 1, basically, it has uh, 16 questions, which is from question number 1 to 16, and each carries one mark. And in section 2, it contains basically four case studies, each having five subparts, out of which four has to be attempted from each one of them. Now, after that, we have section B, which has, uh, I'm sorry, we have part B, which has got three sections, section 1, 2, and 3. So section 1, uh, basically, it has six questions, basically of two marks each, and section 2 has seven questions of three marks each, and section C has three questions of five marks each. Now, let's take a look at the way to distribute your time while solving the paper. So it's basically, it will be a good idea that you can allot the timings uh, to, the, to the different questions according to this. Now, while attempting the 30 to 1 marker question, it's best, it's, it's best that you finish them in 50 minutes. So there are basically... There are basically one to question number 20, 1 to 20 are basically from uh, from these questions and question number 1 to 16 are basically the one markers and question number 16 to 20 are basically the four case studies that I talked about. So basically you can spend, uh, you get to spend 1.5 minutes per question and you know that not all the questions require as much as, um, as 1.5 minutes. Some might require a few seconds and some might require more than 1.5 minutes. Now, here we can see that it is um, best to attempt the six two markers in 30 minutes. This will give us an approximate of five minutes per question, which is in fact, I think plenty of time, right? Now, I would suggest you to carve out 40 minutes to solve the seven three marker questions. That means we are basically getting, um, we are basically getting six minutes per question, which is good enough, right? Now, finally, Put aside 40 minutes for the for the three of uh, uh, for the three five marker questions and these questions tend to be divided into parts so you have to be you have to be careful here and because these questions are going to be time consuming and these questions will take approximately 12 to uh, 11 to 12 minutes each one of them so but you see that all this comes to uh, to approximately 160 uh, to approximately uh, 160 right and well, the last 20 minutes are basically for you to scan through the paper if you had made any mistakes. So those 20 minutes guys are as crucial as these another 160 minutes. So that's why I'm saying to not waste it. Now, 
let's have a look at the different approaches that uh, we must take with regards to the four sections of the question paper. So let's have a let's start with the one marker questions. So these questions are generally straightforward and these are memory based questions. So give direct and precise answer to these questions. And all you have to do is basically is identify the formula and concept and apply it correctly. And the questions that you come across here are generally very short answer type questions, MCQs or even fill in the blanks. And even the case studies that you get there also you have subparts and that are also going to be short answer type. Now let's take a look at the two markers, two markers. So two markers are slightly similar to one markers. So here you have to solve the problem step by step and then you identify the com formula or the concept and you apply it correctly. And in case of three marker questions, you must read them carefully and then solve them step by step, identify the formula or concept, write the formula correctly and apply it correctly. So remember guys, in this question, it is very important to write down the formula just so that the invigilator should, uh, should, should know that you know how to solve the questions properly. Now in case of five markers, take care to check all the parts of the question. I'm saying this because these questions usually have sub parts. And then as usual, you have to solve it step by step, identify and write the formula or the concept correctly and just be careful while doing simplification or calculation. Now let's take a look at the unit wise weightage of the marks in the examination. So you can see that this is all out of 80 marks. So unit one, which is number system, it accounts for six marks or basically 7% of the total marks. And unit two, which is algebra, it is basically of 20 marks. It is 25% of the total marks. And we can see that unit three is coordinate geometry, which is six marks and it is 7% of the total marks. And then we have unit four is geometry, which comprises of 15 marks and it is 19% of the total marks. And you can see unit five is trigonometry, which is basically 12 marks and it is 15% uh, of the all the marks. And unit six is mensuration, that is 10 marks and which is 13% of all the marks. And um, unit seven is statistics and probability, that is 11 marks, which is 14% of all the marks. Now this information has been given to you so that you can properly devote the right amount of time to each of these chapters and you can see that which chapters are basically your strength, right? So according to that, and you can see that some of the chapters have less weightage than the others. So accordingly, you can, uh, you can plan your study time accordingly. You can devote your time accordingly on those chapters, which are basically your stronger suit. Now let's take a look at the important points to keep in mind. So always remember to separate uh, that the separate marks will be provided for every step. So whenever you're solving the questions, always write each and every step, right? And another important thing is to always write the conclusion at the end of each question. Yes, guys, because it carries half to one mark depending about that question. Now let's take a look at the uh, at the deleted portion since COVID began schools were given the order to reduce the syllabus right to and they were uh, ordered to reduce the general um, the general topics from each subject so let's take a look at the uh, at the revised CBSE syllabus for the year 2020 to 2021 so for example in unit one number system the topic Euclid's division lemma from the chapter real numbers have been taken out now uh, with all that said, let's take a look at the concepts that we discussed in basically all the maths chapters. So first we are discussing the unit one, which is real numbers. So here we talked about the rational numbers and irrational numbers. We know what rational numbers are. They are basically expressible in the form of P by Q and where P and Q are integers and Q is not equal to zero. We know that rational numbers have are basically of two types, the one which have a terminating decimal expansion and another one which have a non-terminating decimal expansion. So the ones which have a terminating decimal expansion, they are expressible in the form of two to the power, their denominator is expressible in the form of two to the power n into five to the power n. And if the denominator is not expressible in the form of two to the power n into five to the power n, then they have a non-terminating decimal expansion. Now in this chapter, we have learned about some theorems as well. So it says that if p divides a square, p also divides a, where a is a positive integer and p is a prime number. And we also talked about the irrationality of many numbers like root 2, root 3 and root 5, etc. 
So you will uh, get one question for sure from this theorem because generally these kind of questions come in your exam for three marks or four marks. And on this topic of terminating or non-terminating decimal expansion from here you come across, you will find questions in the previous year papers uh, uh, the, for, for one marks. And there's another formula that we learned in this chapter that is product of two given numbers is equal to product of their LCM and HCM. From this top, from this formula also you might come across question which comes in one mark or two marks. So these are the notes that I have made. You can also make your own notes because we are, I'm not covering all the topics here. I'm covering the topics which are one of the important uh, ones. Now let's take a look at the deleted portion from unit two algebra. So in our unit two algebra, we can see we have polynomials, pair of linear equation in two variables, quadratic equations and arithmetic progressions. So from polynomials, what is deleted? Statement and simple problems on division algorithm for polynomials with real coefficients. And from pair of linear equation in two variables, cross multiplication method has been taken out. And from quadratic equations, situational problems based on equations reducible to quadratic equations. This has been um, deleted. And from arithmetic progressions, applications in solving daily life problems based on sum of n terms has been deleted. Now let's take a look at few of the important concepts that we learned in polynomials. So we know how to classify the polynomials. They are classified on the basis of number of terms and on the basis of degree. On the basis of number of terms, we classify them as monomial, binomial, trinomial and polynomial. Monomials are the ones which have one term, binomial with two terms as you can see here, trinomial with three terms and polynomial with more than three terms, right? And based on the number of degree, degree means the highest power of the variable. We have linear, linear are the ones, as you can see here, the example is given. We have quadratic polynomials with degree two, cubic polynomials with degree three, and biquadratic with degree four. Now let's take a look at some of the formulas that we learned in polynomials. So basically, if the polynomial is quadratic, then its general form is ax squared plus bx plus c. So in that case, basically the zero, since it has degree two, it will have two zeros, which are alpha and beta. So in that case, the sum of zeros, so alpha plus beta is equals to minus b by a. And sum of product of zeros, two at a time is basically not included in case of a, a quadratic polynomial and product of zeros, which is alpha beta is equals to c by a. So, Another one, if we have a cubic polynomial, which is of the form ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So in that case, sum of zeros, which is alpha plus beta plus gamma. So the third zero is gamma here. That will be equals to minus b by a. And alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha, that will be equals to c by a, right? And the third is product of zeros, which is alpha beta gamma, that will be equals to minus d by a. So these are basically the relationship between the zeros and basically the coefficients of the variable. Now uh, let's talk about the pair of linear equations. So here if uh, we have two linear equations which is a1x plus b1y plus c1 equals to 0 and a2x plus b2y plus c2 equals to 0. So if a1 by a2 is not equal to b1 by b2 in that case we say that the lines will be intersecting and they will have a unique solution. And if a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 is equal to c1 by c2, in that case, we say that the lines will be coincident. They will be overlapping, right? And they will have basically infinite solutions. And if a1 by a2 equals to b1 by b2, but not equal to c1 by c2, in that case, the lines will be parallel and it will have no solution. So this is one of the most important concept from the linear equations, uh, but there are other concepts to like solving a pair of linear equations um, by substitution method and uh, elimination method. And there are application based questions as well that you find in linear equations like the upstream downstream problems, the speed distance time problems, and there are others as well. So you should practice those topics as well. As I said that these are few of the topics that I'm covering here. You can make your own notes and you should revise each and every topic which is there in your textbook. Now let's take a look at the uh, at the questions that you will find which are related to quadratic equations. The questions are either based on nature of roots, quadratic uh, equation and its standard form, formation of quadratic equation and solution of a quadratic equation. Now what do I mean by nature of roots? Well, let's see that. So b square minus 4ac is called the discriminant of quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c. So we know that uh, to check the nature of roots, we basically find the value of b square minus 4ac. So basically, we check the discriminant. So if b square minus 4ac is greater than 0, we say that they will have real and distinct roots. 
if the value is positive. So if it is less than zero, that means value is negative, it has no real roots. And if it is equal to zero, then it has real and equal roots. So till now we talked about polynomials, real numbers, pair of linear equations, and next we are going to see arithmetic progression. So this is the general term for an, uh, for an AP, right? So here Tn, which is basically the nth term of the AP, it is also represented as An. And this A is basically the first term of AP and this N uh, represents the serial number of the term. And here the D represents the common difference of an AP. Now let's talk about how to find the sum of N terms, right? So to find the sum of N terms, basically we have two formulas. First is when the last term is known. So we use n by 2 a plus l. Instead of l, you can use a n as well, right? You can also say n by 2 a plus a n, right? Because it represents the last term. And if last term is unknown, in that case, we use n by 2 2 a plus n minus 1 d. So these are the formulas. Uh, these are the only formulas that you find in arithmetic progressions. Now let's take a look at the portions that have been deleted from unit 3 coordinate geometry. So the area of triangle will be removed from this unit. Now let's take a look. Let's go through the formulas um, uh, from the coordinate geometry. So first is the distance formula which says square root of x1 minus x2 whole square plus y1 minus y2 whole square. And then the section formula which says mx2 plus nx1 by m plus n comma m by 2 plus n by n y 1 by m plus n. Then we have midpoint formula which is basically a special case of section formula which says m one, uh, x 1 plus x 2 by 2 y 1 plus y 2 by 2. Then we have centroid of triangle ABC. So how to find the coordinates of centroid? We have a formula which is x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 by 3 comma y 1 plus y 2 plus y 3 by 3. Now let's take a look at the portions that have been deleted from unit Four geometry. So in unit four geometry, we have triangles, circles, and constructions. From triangles, two theorems have been deleted. First is the ratio of areas of two similar triangles is equal to the ratio of squares of their corresponding sides. Next is in a triangle, if square of one side is equal to sum of squares on the other two sides, the angle opposite to the first side is a right angle. So the converse of Pythagoras theorem has also been deleted. And from the chapter circles, nothing has been taken out. And from construction, construction of triangle is similar to a given triangle has been deleted. Now let's quickly take a look at some of the important concepts of the chapter triangles. So basically, we the, uh, one of the important topics is to keep a track of the, uh, uh, the criteria of similarity of triangles. So different criteria for similarity of triangles include ASA, angle side angle, angle angle, triple S, side side side, SAS, side angle side. Now let's take a look at the topics um, which we come across from circles. So here you will come across questions based on angle between radius and tangent and length of tangents from an external point. So these are the two theorems that you should prepare from this chapter and the questions which are based on these theorems. Now let's take a look at the, at the theorem um, at constructions. So here, these are the topics from construction. So first, you come across questions which says to divide a line segment in a given ratio and to construct a tangent to a circle. And then we have to construct similar triangles, scaling, uh, scale factor less than one and scale factor greater than one. So these topics, as I said, have been deleted from the syllabus. Now let's take a look at the deleted portion from unit five, trigonometry. So this includes introduction to trigonometry and which where undefined values of ratios at zero and zero degree, 90 degree has been removed. And then we have trigonometric identities. So trigonometric ratios of complementary angles, this has been deleted and nothing is deleted from heights and distances. Now let's take a quick look at uh, the formulas that we use in this chapter. So. Here we can see we have a right angle triangle. We can see the adjacent side hypotenuse and the opposite side to this angle theta. We know that sine theta is basically equals to opposite side by hypotenuse. Cos theta is adjacent side by hypotenuse. Tan theta is sine theta by cos theta, which is opposite side by adjacent side. Like this, we have other formulas also. Cos sec theta, which is reciprocal of sine theta. Sine theta, sec theta, reciprocal of cos theta. And cot theta, reciprocal of tan theta. And uh, I have heard that students use their, their acronyms as well to learn it. It becomes really simple for them to memorize. So you can use your own acronyms as well. And then we have three trigonometric identities from this chapter, which is sine square theta plus cos square theta equals to one, tan square theta plus one equals to sec square theta, and one plus cot square theta equals to cosec square theta. Now, after that, um, in trigonometry, we have trigonometric ratios, trigonometric identities, and then we have um, heights and distances where you come across questions uh, based on angle of elevation 
elevation and angle of depression. Now let's take a look at the deleted portion from unit 6 which is mensuration. So areas related to circles um, from this problems on central angle of 120 degree that has been taken out and from surface areas and volume strustum of a cone has been removed. Now let's take a look at some of the formulas from areas related to circles. So here we uh, use the formula of area of sector of a circle which is this thing that's pi r square times theta by 360 degree and if you have to find the area of the segment of a circle that's pi r square times theta by 360 degree minus area of triangle O A B. Now let's uh, take a quick look at some of the formulas from surface areas and volumes. So like here you can see there we have a cuboid. So its total surface area is 2 times LB plus BH plus HL and lateral is 2HL plus B and volume is L times B times H. And for cube we have 6A square that's the total surface area. Lateral surface area is 4A square and volume is A cube. And then for cylinder its curved surface area is 2 pi R H. Total surface area is 2 pi R R plus H and volume is pi R square H. And then we have a cone and its curved surface area is pi r l, total surface area pi r r plus l and volume is 1 upon 3 pi r square h. And when it comes to sphere, total surface area is 4 pi r square and volume is 4 upon 3 pi r cube. And for hemisphere, curved surface area is 2 pi r square and total surface area 3 pi r square, volume is 2 by 3 pi r cube. So like this, you can write down all the formulas in a separate notebook so that it will be really easy for you to revise before the exam. Now let's take a look at the deleted portion from unit 7 statistics and probability. So from statistics step deviation method for finding the mean and cumulative frequency curve, frequency graph has been deleted and nothing is deleted from the chapter probability. Now let's take a quick look at the important, at the topics that we have from statistics. So we uh, basically we learned about mean of group data. For that you can use three methods, direct method, assume mean method and step deviation method. As I said, step deviation method has been deleted from the syllabus. So from direct method and assume mean method, you can use any of the method in the exam if it is not mentioned in the question. And to find the mode of the group data, uh, we know that that's basically the highest occurring observation. And then we learned about the mean or median of group data. We learned about the OGEVs that has been deleted from the syllabus. Then we learned about a relation between mean, median and mode. That's 3 median equals to mode plus 2 mean. So you come across one mark question on this formula as well. Now let's take a quick look at the concepts that we learned in probability. So from probability, we basically we learned the formula that probability for any event is number of favorable outcomes by total number of outcomes. So you come across questions based on a, a throwing a die or throwing of two dies and tossing one coin, two coin or three coins. These are one of the important topics from probability and the card problems how can you forget that so basically we have 52 cards in all out of which 26 are red and 26 are black cards so from this 26 card 13 are diamonds and 13 are heart so in this 13 cards basically uh, it will have king queen and jack and in this heart also it will have king queen and jack right these are basically called the face cards and from A to 10, uh, these are numeric cards. Basically, A represents the A's over here. And in heart also, we have A to 10, the numeric cards, and A represents the A's. And in this black cards, we have clubs and spades. And we can see that in these 13 cards, we have king, queen, and jack. Here as well, we have king, queen, and jack. So you can see that here also king, queen, and jack. Here also and here also. So in all, we have 12 face cards, right? And all of them have got one ace. So there are basically four A's. So these card problems are also very important from exam point of view. Now let's take a look at basically some of the example type of problems that you will have to talk, tackle. So these questions were taken from the 2020 board examination paper. So we will do the questions from each section one by one. So from uh, section A, remember all the questions are basically going to be one mark each and these questions are basically memory based. These Basically, these, you have to give very precise answer to these questions. These questions, you will see that generally we find very short answer type questions, fill in the blanks and MCQs. So we shall take a, uh, we shall have a glimpse of each one of, of these questions. So here is the first one. It says the value of K for which the system of equations X minus x plus y minus 4 equals to 0 and 2x plus ky equals to 3 has no solution. So when it comes to no solution, we know that a1 by a2 is equals to b1 by b2 but not equal to c1 by c2. So here a1 is basically 1 and a2 is basically 2 over here and b1 is 1 and b2 is basically k over here. So that's why we are not using here because we need the value of k over here, right? So once we cross multiply this, we get k equals to 2 and basically this comprises of one mark and so option D you can see that's the right answer so uh, 
that's how you can solve it. Now let's take a look from a question from trigonometry. It says the value of uh, 1 plus tan square theta, 1 minus sin theta, 1 plus sin theta is equals to dash. Okay, so this one is basically a fill in the blanks type question. So here 1 plus tan square theta using the trigonometric identity, I can say that 6 square theta, 1 minus sin theta, 1 plus sin theta, that 1 minus sin square theta. So 6 square theta times... 1 minus sin square theta can be written as cos square theta. Now we know that sec theta and cos theta are reciprocal of each other. So they will cancel each other out and answer is going to be 1. So this also comprises of 1 mark. So answer is 1 over here. Now let's take a quick look from a question from probability. It says a die is thrown once. What is the probability of getting a number less than 3? So this is a short answer type question. So when we throw a dice once, we know that the number of out outcomes, uh, total number of outcomes are basically 6. And a probability less getting a number less than 3, that's going to be, what are the numbers which are less than 3? That's 1 and 2. So the probability of getting a number less than 3 that's going to be 2 by 6, right? Which is basically 1 by 3. So this question also comprises of 1 mark. So that's how we solve it. Well, you see that these were the good, a few questions from section A. Now let's take a quick look from the questions that appeared in section B in the 2020 paper. So here these questions are generally straightforward and uh, memory-based questions. So give direct and precise answer to these questions. It says a piece of wire 22 centimeter is bent into the form of an arc of a circle subtending an angle of 60 degree at the center. Find the radius of the circle. So here we have a circle and uh, basically a wire was bent into the form of a circle such that the 22 wire is bent into the form of an arc of a circle. It's subtending an angle of 60 degree and this arc is 22 centimeter. You need to find out the radius. So here we know that length of arc is basically theta by 360 into 2 pi r. That's equals to 22, right? Because length of arc is basically a part of circumference of circle. So theta over here is 60. So that's 2 into 22 by 7 into r equals to 22. So this gets cancelled out. 0 and 0 gets cancelled out. That's 6 times 1, 6 times 6. That's 2 times 1, 2 times 3. So that's r equals to 3 times 7. So r is equals to 21 centimeters. So you see that? these questions these are simple ones right so how we we are just uh, writing the steps that are important and then you just simplify that and you write the answer now let's take a quick look from the question from arithmetic progressions it says show that a minus b whole square comma a square plus b square is equals to a plus b whole square r in ap so whenever we have to show that terms are in ap basically we need to show that the common difference between two successive terms is same so let's calculate the common difference between these two terms. So a square plus b square minus a minus b whole square. So let's see what the common difference is. So that's going to be a square plus b square minus a square plus b square minus 2ab. So once I open the bracket, the signs will change, right? So this becomes plus 2ab. This gets cancelled out. This gets cancelled out. We have 2ab. Now let's check the common difference between these two terms. So that's going to be a plus b whole square minus a square plus b square. That's a square plus b square plus 2ab minus a square minus b square. The signs will change. So we cancel this out and we get 2ab. So what do we see here? We see that the common difference is same. That means the given, um, that means the given uh, terms are in ap. So always write the conclusion that all the three given terms, all the three terms are in ap. So do write the conclusion. Now let's take a look from, from, a, from a question um, which is from statistics. It says find the mean of the following distribution. We can see that we have uh, the data given over here and it is continuous, right? Now let's draw a table for this. So we can see that classes are given and frequency is given. We need to find out the midpoint first, right? the class mark first. So here is the table right in front of you. The classes are here and the midpoints that is denoted by xi. So it is basically lower limit plus upper limit by 2. That's 4. And for 5 and 7, it is 6. For 7 and 9, it's 8. 9 and 11. Between 9 and 11, it's 10. And 11 and 13, it's 12. And the frequencies are given. Now to find out the mean, our formula is mean is equals to that's basically summation fi xi by summation fi, right? So we need to find the sum. So once we multiply 5 with 4, we get 20. 10 with 6, we get 60. 10 with 8, we get 80. 7 times 10 is 70. 8 times 12 is 96. Now let's add all them up. So that's 326. And summation of fi is 40. So we write 40 over here. Now once we simplify this, it's 2 times 10, 2 times 1. And this becomes 12, 2 times 6. And this is basically 
um, that's 2 times 20, I'm sorry, this is 20, 2 times 6 and that's 2 times 3, that's 2 times 10, 2 times 8, 2 times 1 and that will be 5, right, 0.5, so that's 8.15. Now, this step, this comprises of, making this table, this comprises of 1.5 marks and giving this last, this uh, solution that we are solving here, this comprises of half mark over here. Now, these were the questions from section B. Now, let's take a quick look to, uh, to the other, another section, which is basically section C. And just remember that the, whenever you're solving questions from section C and section D, always write the formulas, right? Now, it says in a flight of 600 kilometers, an aircraft was slowed down uh, due to bad weather. Its average speed was the trip was reduced by 20 km per hour and the time of flight increased by 30 minutes. Find the original duration of the flight. So let's suppose that the speed over here, the speed of aircraft is basically x km per hour, right? So when the, the, when the situation was normal, when weather was normal, its speed was distance upon time, that's 600, right? And uh, uh, upon time, so we don't have time here, so time will be distance upon speed, which is 600 by x. But when speed was reduced, it became 600 by x minus 200, right? So speed was reduced by 200, so time became 600 by x minus 200. So here, 600 upon x minus 200 minus 600 by x, that would be equals to 30 minutes, right? So we are dividing by 60 since it was in minutes, right? So this becomes 1 by 2 and this step comprises of 1 mark. Now once we simplify this, we get x square minus 200x minus 24 and you put 4 zeros after this. This step also comprises of 1 mark. And when we do middle term splitting, we get x minus 600 and we get x plus 400 equals to 0. That means x is equals to 600 and minus 400. This step will comprise of half mark. Now you see that speed can never be negative. So minus 400 will be neglected here. That means speed of aircraft is 600 km per hour. Now the original duration, time would be equals to distance upon speed. So distance is 600, speed is also 600. That would come out as one, mark, one hour. So this will also give you half mark. So can you see that how step marking is done in the questions? So that's why we say that you write each and every step in the question. Now let's take a look at the question from coordinate geometry. It says that the point C minus 1 comma 2 is internally divided the line segment joining A 2 comma 5 and B X comma Y in the ratio 3 is to 4. Find the coordinates of P. Now here we will be using the section formula, right? So the coordinates basically when we are using section formula, the formula is going to be X comma Y, MX2, NX1 by M plus N and MY2 plus NY1 by M plus N. So when you write the coordinates of C, so coordinates of C. Basically that's going to be 3 times because this is representing M here, this is N, this is X1, Y1, that's X2, Y2, right? So here the coordinates of C that would be equal to this, so that becomes 3X plus 8 by this is M plus N will give us 7, comma 3Y plus 20 that will be also be equal to 7. Now the coordinates of C are minus 1, comma 2. That's 3x plus 8 by 7, comma 3y plus 20 by 7. Now let's equate uh, the coordinates. So this x coordinate will be equal to this. So 3x plus 8 by 7 equals to minus 1. Now when you simplify this, you get x equals to minus 5, right? And for this step also, till this step, we are going to get, when you substitute the values here, till this step we get 1 and a half mark. And for this step, when you write the final answers, now we equate this with 2. So you get y equals to minus 2. And for this step, when you give this, you get 1 mark. Now still half mark is left. So for that, as I said, you have to give the final conclusion. So the coordinates of B would be minus 5 comma minus 2. These are the coordinates of B. And when you mention that, you get half mark for this as well. So that's how the marks are distributed in a question. Now let's take a look for, uh, for, look, look for a question from trigonometry. It says if sine theta plus cos theta is equals to root 3, then prove that tan theta plus cot theta equals to 1. So here this is given. Now squaring both sides will give us sine square theta plus cos square theta. Let me write the first step here. So sine theta plus cos theta whole square, that's equals to root 3 square. So this step will give you 1 mark. And you have sine square theta plus cos square theta plus 2 sine theta cos theta, that's equals to 3. So this becomes 1 and we have 2 sine theta cos theta that's equals to 3 to so 2 sin theta cos theta that's equals to 2. So I can say that sin theta cos theta will be equals to 1. So till here we also get 1 mark. 
Now we need to prove that tan theta plus cot theta is equals to 1. Now for that, what we can do here is, so in this equation, I can write this one as sine theta cos theta is equals to sine square theta plus cos square theta, right? We can write one like this. Now let's divide both sides by sine theta cos theta. So this becomes 1 and this becomes sine by cos and this becomes cos theta by sine theta, right? So this becomes 1 and that is tan theta plus cot theta and once you solve this you get one mark for this. Now these were the questions from section C. Let's take a quick look at the questions from section D and let's see what all questions do we have here. It says show the square of any positive integer cannot be of the form 5q plus 2 or 5q plus 3 for any integer q. So this is a question from real numbers. So it, first we write here let a be any positive integer where b is 5 which is the divisor and a is equals to 5m plus r and r can take value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now from case 1, let's suppose that a is equals to 5m. So squaring both sides will give us a square equals to 25m square. If I take 5 common from this, we have 5 times 5m square. And this, let's assume this has q, so that's equals to 5q. So we can say that a square is equals to 5q. Now case 2, we have a equals to 5m plus 1. Again, we are squaring both sides and we open the whole square formula. We have 25m square plus 10m plus 1. Now let's keep this one aside and take 5 common from these two terms. So we have 5 times 5m square plus 2m. So let's assume this has q. So we have 5q plus 1. Now in case 3, we have a equals to 5m plus 2. So squaring both sides will give us a square equals to 25m square plus 20m plus 4. Now let's keep this 4 aside and let's take 5 common from these terms. We have 5 times 5m square plus 4m. So that's 5q plus 4. Now in case 4, we have similarly a equals to 5m plus 3. Again, we do squaring both sides and we keep 4 aside here, right? And um, so 9 can be split, split as 5 plus 4. So we write 5 here. And once I take common, I get 5 times 5m square plus 6m plus 1. So this can be assumed as q. So it becomes 5q plus 4. Now in case 5, we have a equals to 5m plus 4. On squaring both sides, we get this. If I keep this one aside, we have 5 times 5m square plus 8m plus 3. Let's assume this to be q. So we have 5q plus 1. Hence, square of any positive integer cannot be of the form 5q plus 2 and 5q plus 3 for any integer q. So you see that always give the conclusion for the answer. Now let's take a look at the question from um, constructions. It says draw a line segment AB of length 7 cm, taking A as center, draw a circle of radius 3 cm and taking B as center, draw another circle of radius 2 cm, construct tangents to each circle from the center of the other circle. So let's draw a line segment first. We have a line segment AB over here. Okay, so that's AB. Now taking A as center, draw a circle of radius 3 centimeter. So this is a circle of radius 3 centimeter. You'll be using your geometrical tools for that to do it, right? And another circle with B as center, draw a radius of circle with radius 2 centimeter, right? Now we have to construct tangents to each circle from the center of the another one. So in that case, what do we do? We take the perpendicular bisector of this line. So when you take the perpendicular bisector, so let's mark this midpoint as C. Now keeping your, the pointy end of the compass here and a, taking A as radius, draw a circle which passes through these points A and B like this. And let's mark here P, Q, R and S. Now we have to draw the uh, we have to draw the uh, tangents from the center of one circle to the uh, to the um, to basically uh, to the center of the another circle, right? To each circle. So from here we draw the tangents here at this point and from this center B we draw tangents here like this. So that's how we can do it and when you do it in the exam you write the steps of construction as well. Now let's take a look at a question from heights and distances. It says a vertical tower stands on a horizontal plane and is surmounted by a flagstaff of height 6 meters. At a point on the plane the angle of elevation of the bottom and the top of the flagstaff are 30 and 45 respectively. Find the height of the tower take root 3 equals to 1.73. So we have a vertical tower first and on a horizontal plane. And this is the flagstaff and let's suppose this is the height of the vertical tower and 6 meter is the height of the flagstaff. And the angles are given which basically the bottom of the flagstaff is making is here and the top is making 45 degrees, right? Now we need to find the height of the tower. Basically we need the height h. So here in this triangle BOD here we can say that tan 30 degree that is equals to h by x. That's our first equation. So from here tan 30 is basically 1 by root 3. That's h by x. So I can say that x is equals to root 3 h. Right. 
Now, in this bigger triangle, triangle A, O, D, here, I can say that tan 45 degrees is basically equals to 6 plus H. That's the perpendicular and base is H. So tan 45 is 1 and 6 plus H by X is here, right? So I can say from here we have X is equals to 6 plus H. So instead of, um, instead of X over here, I can write root 3H, that's equals to 6 plus H, right? So I can say that here, if I take H to one side, I can say that root 3H minus H is equals to 6, right? Now if I take H common from here, let me write this down here. If I take H common, so we have root 3 minus 1 is equals to 6, right? Now let's take this root 3 minus 1 to the other side. So it will be H equals to 6 upon root 3 minus 1. So what we are going to do here, we will rationalize this. And once we rationalize it, it's going to become root 3 minus 1. That's root 3 plus 1. And this is root 3 plus 1. So H would be equals to 6 times root 3 plus 1. The denominator, we have root 3 square minus 1 square, which will give us 3 minus 1. That's 2. So that's 3 times root 3 plus 1. And once we simplify this, we get 8 point. 1.9 meters. That's basically the height. So here we have substituted the value of root 3 which is 1.73. So these were the questions from all the four sections. Now before we end our session today I just want to give you a few tips that you can follow before your exam day. So try to avoid looking at a new topic that you may have missed out. So it better you spend your time, you better you utilize your time on the topics on the topics that you've already gone through. Now make sure that you revise the prepared notes that you have prepared or you have got from your teachers. With this, you will get um, you will get a sound idea of where to spend your energy actually. Now I can't stress this enough, but you should definitely stay relaxed and cool and not to worry too much because I believe that if you if you um, I believe that um, basically uh, you won't be able to concentrate on your studies then. So just be relaxed and take a eat a very balanced diet. Because, because it, it, when you take a balanced diet, your, your body stays fit and you will be able to concentrate on your paper then. And finally, do take proper eight hours of sleep. Otherwise, if you spend your, do not, do not spend your time in revising the portion, the remaining portion. Just take proper sleep so that you won't feel sleepy during the exam, right? Now, I shall leave with you with some tips for the exam day. So before you start writing the exam, you get 15 minutes to scan through the whole paper. So in those 15 minutes, just scan through the whole paper and note down the ones that you uh, that you feel that you will hardly take uh, any time to solve this. And check those also that you feel that you would require more time to, to spend on them. Right? So, and do not worry about the, about the tough, and the very difficult questions. It's better to focus on your strong suit. And as I said, solve the uh, easy ones first. At least uh, this way you will be able to spare some time for the tougher questions, right? And then you can uh, spend more time. You can calmly solve those tough questions one by one. And after that, trying to understand what worth of each question means, you see that each question uh, um, is basically amounted to different marks. So depending amount, uh, depending upon the weightage of each question and how much time you should spend on that, that you have to figure out during the exam. So that's why we say that you should always, um, you should always do, do ample practice. You should always attempt sample papers before your exam. So that you get prepared for all these things. Now I also suggest you to maintain the right speed and accuracy so that you won't waste time doing the, the easier ones first and rushing on the questions um, that basically carry more weightage or basically the questions that are basically difficult for you to solve. And and always keep a close watch on the time. Well, it's always best to take a watch to the ex uh, examination hall, even if there is, uh, you might, even this, there is clock in the examination hall, but you should always carry one with you. Now, with all that being said, as I, all, all I have to say is just be relaxed, be calm, don't be stressed out, because you see that, just write this exam like any other exam you write, and just, it's, it's not the end of your life. And with that, so just hang tight and best of luck for your exams. Thank you.